So in this episode, I will be covering trading patterns and I'll give a brief overview on how to spot good trading patterns. And then I'll go into detail about some certain matchups from a statistical point of view, since there are so many different matchups in League of Legends that we can get that I will try to cover it from a concept point of view uh, based on the style of champions that we're going to be playing. So I'll go into detail on several styles of champion and several different matchups. And the goal of this is to kind of provide a different perspective from the different types of matchups you can be finding yourself into and and being able to analyze the different win and lose conditions of those matchups. So we're going to be playing Silas versus Rumble, and both of our champions as fall in the same category. We're a mix between bruisers and mages. We're pretty much a tanky, we're just like a battle mage. So there's going to be a lot of trading, and we both have different win and lose conditions in this lane. My win condition is to force an all-in because I have Conqueror, but so is his. So from both sides of the matchups, we need to be careful on which all-in we decide to choose because both of us are waiting for the other person to use one of his skills. So that by itself, one person using a skill is a pretty big alarm bell on what trade is good to take or not. Because if your opposing laner used the skill to push the lane, then that means that he has one skill less that he can use in the all-in against you. So that's one of the biggest things you need to look out for in trades is tracking enemy cooldowns because if they use all their skills to clear the wave, even if they have minion advantage, all their spells are on cooldown and all of yours are not. So you can pretty much get a free trade on them. So although they used all their spells to get push advantage over you for just a small period of time, they did that at the expense of their health. So it's up to you to punish it because if they use all their spells to push a wave, then that's your window to trade. We're both pretty cautious at the beginning with the spells we want to use because both of us, we don't know what the other person did because he could have taken Q, he could have taken E. And now that he shows this, then this is my window to start the fight. Like now, as we can see, we're just both fighting for wave control because both of our skills are on cooldown. So now there's not a lot, uh, not a lot of fighting. We're just fighting slowly for minion control and trying to bait each other to use a skill on the wave. In this matchup, I'm running Corrupting Potion and he's running Doran's Ring. So I have a sustained advantage over him. Tr longer trades are better for me because I have an extra potion over him because he has Doran's Ring and two potions and I just have Corrupting Potion. So one important thing in the laning phase on top lane is the race to level two because whoever gets level two first in the lane will probably get push advantage and get a good trade off. So the way you get level two first is the first wave has to be cleared and whoever kills the first melee minion of the second wave will get level two. So in this, now we're noticing we clear equally, but now he got level two. But now it's not that big of a deal because his Q is on cooldown and the only thing he can do is just poke me with E. But as you can see, this minion is about to die, so he only gets temporary advantage over me. And he, since he doesn't have Q, he cannot get a really good all-in on me. Now I get level two. And now his skills are on cooldown. His Q is on cooldown. His E is on cooldown. And now he makes the mistake of walking forward into me. As we can see, I get a really good trade here. And this is just because of the concept I said earlier, tracking cooldowns in lane, because he used all his spells and I had both my spells up and he didn't respect that. He got the push, like as you can see, he has the push advantage over me, but I had my skills up. So he traded this push advantage for this much HP. Like he lost a lot of HP just to get the push. As you can see, the wave is pushing to me and now we're in a pretty good spot. Right now we notice that He's really chunked, he has to use some potions, and the wave is frozen right here. And we noticed that our jungler started both sides, so he will be top side soon. So this wave, as long as we hold it here for a long time and we have control of the wave, we're gonna be in a better spot because we have a HP advantage, we have lane control right now, and if he wants to push this lane out, he needs to trade his HP again. But since my jungler is coming to the top lane, this is better for me. Like if you notice, look how scared he has to play because he used this E and he knows that if he comes here to try to push out this wave, he will get all in. So all he, ha all he can do here is just play it slow and sit max range and try to push this out as safe as possible. As you can see, I don't want to push this out. I don't want to keep the wave here as long as possible because my kindred is on the top side right now. So as long as I keep the wave like around this point right here, 
and keeping him chunked like this, then Kindred has a really good time ganking because I have really good gank setup. As we can see, this is one of his mistakes again. We see him walk forward, use Q and W, so he does not have those abilities to trade me again. And here all my spells are on cooldown, so I can't really do a good trade, but he makes a mistake of walking back in. And now, as you can see, I have only two seconds cooldown on my Q. So I can go here for a bit forward to try and get my last Q off, but now I don't want to chase anymore. All my spells are on cooldown, his spells are about to come up, so if I chase into this, which a lot of people might do, we will realize that although he has 200 HP and we have 450, we will most likely lose this all in really hard because all his spells are coming off cooldown. As we can see, his Q is up, his W is up, his E is up, and all our spells are on cooldown, so we cannot chase here. Our best bet here is to go back, play it safe, get lane control again, and if he tries to contest the wave again, when our skills are up again, now we can force the all-in because we have HP advantage. HP advantage and tracking cooldowns are the key aspects of forcing good trades. So here we see he got an E off on me, and it's fine. And now his Q is on cooldown again, and now we can look for a fight soon. As you can see, his Q ran out, he used an E, and all my spells are coming up, so I can chase here. I can overextend because even if he turns and fights me, he only has one spell available, or two, if he has E again, his second charge. So, as you notice from this all-in, after this fight, after Rumble died, and he Rumble now, he's dead. He has a decision to make. How will he get back to lane? His answer will most likely be a TP on this minion. I am still deciding to stay here because I still have one biscuit and my goal here is to keep this lane here because this lane is still frozen because you managed the wave properly and I want to keep the lane here and force Rumble to come back, overextend without flash and Kindred, my Kindred is going to stay topside because he still has crap to do and a couple of camps here. So although I will be behind on items and on HP, I have a freeze here and the worst thing that can happen to me is Rumble will come He'll push the wave in, and that's it. I will just catch the wave under tower, get all these remaining CS, two, four, I will get these remaining 11 CS, and then just back and TP with a better base, because I get from 11 CS, I get around 300 more gold. So although I give up the control to him for a bit, I put him in a difficult scenario where he has to gamble. So that, will he push out with jungler being topside? Or I can stay and just keep farming for free, because he cannot all in me. Rumble uses TP. And now we see Rumble is trying to contest Kindred here. And one of the benefits of freezing and wave manipulation, as we discussed in the previous episode, is that right now, if I choose to move to help my Kindred, I won't lose anything because my next wave is here. And the next wave will crash here into another freeze for me. And I have a free move to just help my Kindred. Let's look at the wave. So I have a freeze here and I can get to, to move because I know that my next wave will be coming here in time to just keep it frozen here. So right now, let's just observe what happens here. As you can notice, Rumble died, and now I base for free, and I just TP here. And let's look, I TP'd, I got my items, and the wave is still here, and it's even a bigger freeze now. And now, let's compare the items between me and Rumble. I have such a big lead, and the wave is frozen here. So whenever Rumble wants to walk up to the wave, he is in a really bad spot because he has no flash. I have a lot of gold over him, and the wave is frozen. So this is a really good opportunity for me to, uh, to force a trade on him because in this situation, he is forced to choose. Does he want to push the wave out, or does he want to trade me? And either of these options are bad for him because he will lose the trade because I have more items. And if he goes, even if it's an even scenario, if he wants to go for the push, we saw what happened earlier. He went for the push, used his abilities on the wave, and then I all in him. And this is what's going to happen again. And I'm setting up the same wave like this. As you can see, he has to be so overextended to even catch this wave. This is one of the trades we can do because we have uh, item advantage. He needs to come and commit to the wave. We saw him use W, we saw him use E. So now it's a perfect opportunity for us to just fight. And here we can get one more auto, but we can we shouldn't like we don't need to over to extend the trade. Like this is as much as we can do because now all our spells are on cooldown and chasing into him won't give us anything. 
And now we just go back and control the wave again. And as we can see, we did another trade and the wave is still frozen here and he just lost 60% of his HP. And now from this point on, we have a slow push. This is one of the cases where uh, we should use slow push to get jungle here and try to dive him. Or I should just fast push this if I'm scared of enemy jungle gank and just run away. But since this game I'm so strong and enemy duo is Kartus and Rumble, I'm in a pretty safe spot. So now since Rumble got chunked so hard and the wave is slow pushing back to him, he actually can reset and catch the wave at his tower. But the thing is, now he's in really deep trouble because I'm setting up a wave and enemy jungle needs to come and help him. 